Have you ever wondered how the universe all ends, how everything ceases to exist? In today's video, thanks to one of our commentators, we're going to get to find out. Shoutouts to you. I'll put the name on the screen. You have a crazy username. But today's video is courtesy of Quartz Cause Arts, and it's called The Last Thing to Ever Happen in the Universe. If you haven't checked out this channel, it's a wonderful science-based fact-checked content that you should check out. So let's get into the video right away. The universe today is happy and healthy with exciting things going on. But at some point, the night will turn dark. Everything that once was will peacefully sleep forever. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the universe has an ending? Like really an ending where, you know, the expansion at some point reaches critical mass and it stops and it maybe reverses into a collapse? Let me know in the comments what you think. This is all guessing at this point based on what we see, what evidence we have. But it's still, at the end, a theory. But what is the last thing that will ever happen? And when will it be? It turns out there is such a thing, and you probably haven't heard about it. You mean everything I have around me is going to cease to exist? You mean there is an actual end to everything that's beyond just biblical? Thanks, Cult Cazarts. Let's travel to the end of the universe and look at the last thing. After a messy birth, our universe was a sleepy baby, warm and dark, oh, filled with whirling clouds baby. of hot hydrogen and helium. Hot, hot, hot baby. The story of creation is a story of this gas and where it will end up. Shortly after, the universe got busy making the first generation of stars. Mm -hmm. They were massive and lived violent lives, forging new elements, only to they were going through their little teen phase, right? You know. At least most of them when they blew up. Countless stars were born and refined the gas available in the universe, cycling matter around it. And that's how we get those heavy elements like gold, silver, nickel, copper, and so on. Each generation giving most of its gas and fresh elements to the next. Mm -hmm. But not all gases returned. Every time a new generation of stars forms, they also make more and more red dwarfs, Bad dwarfs. that burn slowly and live for trillions of years. When they die, they just, just picture that. They don't give their gas back to the universe, but turn into white dwarfs. So greedy white dwarfs. So red dwarfs lock up more gas forever. Some more gas is locked forever in other remains of dead stars. Neutron. Hmm. What happens when all the matter is locked up in a star or destroyed in a black hole? On stars and black holes, which is bad as it reduces the material available for new stars. Mm -hmm. Today, the universe is a great home for us and will remain so for billions of years. But Clap it up for having a universe right now that is, is we're in the prime time in the universe's existence we're right in the in a hot bed of the best moments to exist as a species as a life form so we got to clap it up for being like that. has been used up or trapped over 90 percent of the stars that will ever be born have been born already oh my god what to get to the last thing to ever happen all other things need to happen first. All the birdies are going to sleep through all of existence to get to the end, just so they could see the show. <laughs> the next few hundred billion years will be fun and a great time for galactic exploration. Yes. But step by yes. By step, large stars and stars like our sun will die out. Eventually, Ooh. almost all the stars will be red dwarfs slowly dying. Boo. The end of everything. Red dwarfs could could life harness could life exist as orbiting around a red dwarf? Is, is are they these are not super stable? They're pretty dangerous. They're not. They're gonna pretty much sterilize life every chance it gets. 
You tell me in the comments. But not quite. In a few trillion years, the cosmic gas will finally have run out. About 88% of the mass of every galaxy will be white dwarfs. Ooh, 88%. Jeez. 2% neutron stars and black holes. I was surprised about that. Black holes, only 2%. As giants and sad brown dwarf losers. White dwarfs are the corpses. Of course, because it's so mean. Gas giants and sad brown dwarf losers. Now, why do they got to be losers? White dwarfs are the corpses of old stars. Not much bigger than Earth, but on average, as massive as half our sun, some Jeez. even much more. This makes them the Insane. third densest objects in the universe, after neutron stars and black holes. Since wow. they used a million times more dense than the sun to be active and oh my god look at the temperature difference the, <laughs> these bad boys are super hot so orbiting around these as in a planet you'll be extra crispy for sure <laughs> look at the sun in comparison it's cold <laughs> Stars, their surface can be as hot as 150,000 degrees. Guess that's where the term comes from white hot. White dwarfs are dim, hot, dense spheres that don't do anything anymore. But eventually, even white dwarfs will die because they're slowly losing their heat. Mm. It takes at least 10 trillion years, more than seven. That's all, that's all, just 10, 10, okay, 10 trillion years, that's it. 700 times longer than the current age of the universe. <laughs> As they do their cooling down, the universe around them will irreversibly grow dark as more and more wow. white dwarfs burn out and turn into dead husks. Black dwarfs. Spheres. These don't exist yet, obviously, because <laughs> hasn't been trillions of years yet. Man, so just in theory, that's what eventually should happen, right? ...of death as cold as space itself, invisible against the dark back. Wow, and it's cold. A drop. It's cold while still maintaining the density. Over trillions and trillions of years, every object in every galaxy is eventually either ejected into the void or its orbit decays and it will fall into the central black hole and be destroyed. The recycling bins of the universe. In about a quintillion years, all galaxies have evaporated and every object is on its own in the center of its own observable universe. Ima imagine how sad of an existence that would be looking up into the stars and there's no stars it's just darkness everywhere everywhere you look emptiness as far as can be seen in any direction traveling through black nothingness jeez and you would never be able to even put together how right now because of light we're able to see into the past we're able to see near the big bang event just hundreds of thousands of years from that event with the cosmic microwave background. Imagine when all of that is also gone. Like you, you have no, no record of what happened in the past, unless it's been passed down, you know, that information and that knowledge has been, you know, spread and passed down over the eons and billions of years. <sighs> That's crazy. Still, there are things that will happen. Black holes are dying slowly. They'll fit. They pretty much just sweat it out. <laughs> this will take about a Google years. Oh, just a Google years. Okay. 10 to the power of 100 years until the last supermassive black hole. Are you guys like wrapping your minds around these numbers? <laughs> all dies. A number so absurd, there's nothing to compare it to. Jeez. Maybe some living beings could have survived around black holes. Mm -hmm. But even this science fiction option ends now. But does it really have to end? What if if they're this advanced to be able to tap in, tap into the black hole for energy? Couldn't they throw a bunch of massive objects together and create a new black hole? What would happen if you group a bunch of black dwarfs together? Could they collapse into a black hole? Any physicists out there that could tell me the answer in the comments? I'd love to know. After this unsettling amount of time, we're not even close to the end. Now is the time of the black dwarfs. It turns out there's some weird physics going on inside the dead husk of stars. Imagine the weird matter, exotic matter that might be formed in these extreme environments. It's, it's so interesting. I wonder what are the limits to exploring those type of things. 
But usually these exotic type of matters, they don't exist for very long. They're unstable and they decay into something else practically useless for our purposes. A black dwarf is a sphere the size of Earth, as massive as a star, but almost as cold as absolute zero. Stars stay alive because of their intense heat in their cores. So why do black dwarfs not collapse into a black hole? Mm. What keeps them to Good question. Hmm. together? Deep inside a black dwarf, matter is squeezed to densities millions of times greater than anything we see on Earth. Oh, okay. Earth's crust, 2.5. <laughs> Inner black hole, 100 billion per centimeter. Sheesh. Earth's core is 10. I don't know what this is. Osmium 22. Look at the insanity. And that's the Earth's core, the center. Jeez. The pressure is so great that electrons can't combine with the nuclei to form atoms. Instead, matter is weird, degenerate. A little drunk. <laughs> they said degenerate. But the nuclei are compressed by the weight of the star locked into a rigid lattice, while the electrons form a plasma between them. And these electrons hold the star together. We're simplifying, but imagine matter as a subway train and electrons as passengers. Are you one of those people who sees a bus full of empty seats or at the airport, plenty of empty seats and decides, you know what, I want to sit right next to you. Those people are annoying. Don't be one of those. But as a black dwarf is so incredibly dense, this is like squishing more and more passengers into our train. Gravity is pushing in, trying to collapse it. The Extreme levels of sardine sardine can syndrome. Passengers are forced to sit and stand close together, which they hate. And so the passengers, hmm. our electrons, try to the push attitude. out against gravity as hard as they can. This way, the electrons that are having a horrible time in the crowded train that's the Black Dwarf hold up the star. Jeez. Or they would if quantum mechanics didn't ruin everything. Mm. There goes quantum mechanics doing its funny things, just messing with, with our existence, adding so much randomness to the world. Simplifying a lot. When particles get close enough, sometimes they can jump at each other and fuse together. A process called quantum tunneling. I like a fusion dance in, <laughs> in Dragon Ball Z. This happens constantly in stars because of their intense heat. It's one of the key reasons stars can fuse elements into new ones. And then we make the heavier elements. This. Wow. Even in the cold environments, it could happen with gravity. Is the final step to creating the last interesting thing to ever happen in our universe. Here, in this lone black dwarf, something fantastic occurs. Nothing happens for a trillion years. A trillion years? Oh, God. Nothing at all. Can you imagine that? But then, a single fusion reaction. Two carbon nuclei combined by quantum tunneling to become magnesium. Just one reaction is required. Another 100 trillion years pass. It happens again. Then nothing for another bazillion years. <laughs> Bazillion years, Quark Resorts? It sounds like you're making up numbers now. Oh, two oxygen nuclei combine into silicon. As eons pass, the nuclei two. in the frozen black dwarf slowly combine, making new heavier nuclei. And these take even longer to fuse, but given enough time, they eventually will. Remember the breathtaking amount of time it took for a supermassive black hole to evaporate? Yes, yes, that, that number was short as hell. It, it, I sleep longer than that. That's a brief moment in comparison to what's going on here. Oh, yeah? The difference between a second That's and it? trillions of years That's has all? lost all meaning. Over exactly. Time, so exactly. Like, are, are you guys wrap Again, let me say it again. Are you guys wrapping your mind around these numbers? It's ridiculous. It's practically forever. <laughs> Sir, that it has no name, nuclei keep fusing into heavier elements until when silicon nuclei fuse they and the, the sad part is all this time is happening after pretty much the universe has gone dark for nickel 56 nickel 56 is radioactive which means it's unstable and when it eventually decays and turns into iron it emits two positrons bullies 
not so nice anti on a them and themselves matter. which is a problem remember how the uncomfortable electrons produce the pressure to hold the star together to oh hold up God. the star losing an electron does not give them more space to oh then it's gonna lose stability it won't be able to push outward and keep the balance in check uh oh as they get destroyed Scratch there, but it just makes gravity squeeze harder, the walls closing in on those that remain. In the case yeah. of the most massive black dwarfs, this is catastrophic. Bit by bit, the black dwarf turns into a sphere of iron, and more electrons are annihilated. Oh, no. For at least 10 to the power of 1,000 years, almost, but not... <laughs> it's getting to the point that it's pointless to just even keep numbers. It's getting pointless. Quite forever. There's no visible change in the entire universe. And then, finally... Look at these guys. Look at the the Captain Bird. He's so excited. It's The time. last thing to ever happen, happens. The Black Dwarf has lost one too many electrons. It can no longer support its immense mass and goes into an uncontrolled collapse, a supernova. It first implodes and then explodes as bright as a galaxy and fills the empty universe with light again. A beautiful moment nobody will get to enjoy. So sad. And then, as quickly as it began, it's all over. Darkness again. Emptiness. Oh my god, imagine. Imagine. That's where we're all heading, <laughs> eventually. That was the last thing that will ever happen. The Gee, we're at the end of the video, and I want to know what you guys think. Do you think this is the probable end to the universe, or do you have a different theory? Do you think there's a, a cycle of boom and bust where the universe actually keeps expanding and then collapsing? It, in both cases, it's the complete destruction of everything. But it doesn't mean that there is an end, just a cycle in this alternate theory what do you guys think does this make you appreciate your existence more does it make you appreciate the smallest things because the time we spent on this earth is so short compared to the existence of the universe the existence of all reality it's a blink not even if you're lucky to live to 100 years old you are blessed technically but that is nothing that's a hundred years is nothing. So does this make you appreciate everything around you more? Appreciate every second, every day, every minute more? Let me know in the comments. It certainly does for me and marvel at the wonders of the universe. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and also for sure leave me a comment. I want to get that discussion going.